without, you can manage and eat very well with very little. And I met somebody um, recently who gave me a book that she's produced and it's called Saturday Soup. So it's a children's book, but what it does, it takes you through all the steps of making in soup on Saturday, but then it talks about the heritage about Saturday soup. And I said, wow, that would be fantastic. You know, we should take this and turn that into a workshop. So there could be things around parents um, and learning some of those dishes and things and to talk about healthy eating and also support around shopping and things because it is possible. We've got a great market in Russia uh, where you can get um, really cheap ingredients and it is possible, but they just don't know. So maybe okay, that's the piece Barbara. of work that Does could be done. Does any questions for Barbara at all? I'll take two questions. And Ron, I'm going to come to you, and then we're going to come to you, Mark, after Ron, please. Is that Rose, Ro, Rosa? Your mute is on. <laughs> Hi, sorry. No problem. Oh, hi, Rosie. Hi. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yes, I do. I just wanted to let Barbara know that I do have a friend who does cooking classes in Lewisham. She's paid by the council to educate young parents um, on healthy eating meals. So again, I think a lot of these things are there, but people don't know how to access them. Can you give us the name to that, Rosalind? Sorry. Sorry. Can you give us the full details in that? Do you want to say the name of the organisation? I will have to find out to give you exactly the right um, information. Okay. But there are there are these schemes going on in Lewisham. The actual issue is how do people access these schemes or how do people know these schemes are actually there? I think that's what the issue is, really. But I will find that and I will send that to you. Right, OK. Yeah. And I think, and I think, and, and it's about delivering those things in the community. So, you know, when we've got the spaces that we've got in Catford and everything, and there's lots of things going on, those are, are places where we could be really bringing it back into the community and make sure it's appropriate. So. Sorry, I was speaking to my wife then. I've come over. Sorry about that. Yeah. Did you get the question answered? Did anybody else want to ask Barbara a question? Okay, thank you, Barbara. Appreciated. Um, Ron, would you like to have a few words? What we what we're going to try and do, guys, if you have got any organisations or you've got any um, individuals that are doing work for youth or planning work for youth or supporting parents, this is what we're here for: bringing up organisations where the support mechanisms are, where they can get advice. That's one of the reasons we're doing this um, conference. So please uh, mention names. Ron? You're on mute. Uh, thanks. Uh, my, my hand was up earlier, but <clears throat> I'm still gonna use the opportunity to ask the question. Or okay. Bring out the point. <laughs> um, it was really just further to what Barbara was saying about obesity. Um, and I'm mentioning it because Jonas actually brought up that, that um, topic. Uh, he didn't mention it in his, in his presentation, but he did, tell, he did he messaged me um, and said that that was one of the points that young people felt. Um, he didn't say obesity, he said they're eating too much. Jonas, is that right? Yeah, it's true, yeah. Jonas, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that it's, it, I'm trying to put it back in the context of what we're here talking about. Um, obesity in families, BAME, um, BAME families in particular, but young people have cited it as an issue. So I'm thinking that, um, you know, the lack of physical activity um, is, is a problem. And I think, it, and I'm mentioning it really so that it's ticked off as, as an area for examination and possibly um, some sort of, some sort of um, or supporting organizations that already do work in that area, physical activity. I know that um, just, to quick, just to give a quick plug to Lucian Sports Consortium that works a lot with young people, Mike Garrick, Lascelles and the crew. Um, and um, any other organization, I would, I would try and look at them and see how can we work together to provide opportunities for physical activity for young people. So I'm throwing that one out there. Um, second point, and I suppose this is what Maurice probably wants me to talk about, is um, 
where do, where do we go from this particular juncture? It is 10 minutes to 8, and we're wrapping up by 8.30. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that I've thrown that particular point out, because one of the things that I mentioned, and one of the objectives that we have is... Us. And then I'm going to ask uh, Mr. David Michael, if you'd like to have a chat after Mark, please. Mark's going to do a presentation on... Uh, on I'll, let Mark, I'll let you introduce yourself, Mark, and you can explain your presentation, please. Yep, certainly. Um, absolutely no problem. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Burbeck. First and foremost, um, I just want to say a massive well done to Maurice for putting on this event. It's an absolutely fantastic event. We have um, lots of different stakeholders, uh, many great organizations and individuals. So um, big clap. <laughs> oh, everyone's on mute, but big clap for Maurice um, for putting this on. I'm uh, not Maurice. Mute, so I can clap. <laughs> Maurice has actually completed the Startup in London Library SEAL course that I'm going to be um, talking about today. So um, Maurice has completed part one, part two, Marketing Masterclass, um, and he will be receiving his certificate of mm -hmm. completion for this. Um, and Maurice and I will be working together in the future on, on various um, projects. Um, I suppose, you know, building on what Joel said earlier and Jonas, it's very important to engage the young people. It's great to see um, some of them on the, the, the webinar here today, um, as well as the organizations. And I suppose for young people, if they see Jonas and his action packed you know, presentation and video, and they think, you know, I want the growth mindset or I have the growth mindset, I'm ready, I wanna take on the world, what do I do next? I'm what they do next, essentially. Um, I'm a great um, resource, or the Startups in London Libraries project is a great resource for young people to engage with, but it's not specific only to young people, it's also open to adults as well. So I'm gonna give you an overview of the project um, and go through the slides, um, and then hopefully we'll have time for a couple of questions at the end, okay? So the Startup in London Libraries project, or SIL as it's known for short, is um, a business support project um, aimed at working with people on a local level. So it's been put together with a, a range of stakeholders, which include the British Library, um, 10 London um, boroughs, JP Morgan, the Arts Council, and the European Union in the form of the European Regional Development Fund. So they've put together this 3.74 million pound project to run over the course of three years. Um, it's currently due to end in June 2021. However, due to the coronavirus, um, that end date could extend. Um, it's not privy to any sort of Brexit issues. This is a, a separate fund that has been secured. So the project certainly will be running at least till the end of uh, June 2021, um, but we are expecting it to extend. And what the project really delivers is business support, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial support for people taking on that journey. Um, it's filled with SME champions for each borough, each of the 10 boroughs. Uh, and first and foremost, I want to speak to you about the eligibility criteria, because as I said, it is eligible and accessible to young people. And a lot of times um, there's great things and resources available to adults but not children, or it's available to young people, you know, under 25s, but not adults. Whereas this is a more of a universal approach. Both people do have access. So, you know, if you're in an organization or you're a young person yourself, please listen up because um, the eligibility criteria is simply whether yourself or your business is based in London. And if you have a business that's registered for less than 12 months or a business idea. So it's quite simple um, eligibility criteria. I, I imagine most of us on the call uh, live in London um, and most of us also will either have a business idea or a business that's been registered for less than 12 months. So most people would fulfill the eligibility criteria. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned, there are 10 different um, local boroughs that are part of this project, of which Lewisham are one. And of the 10 different, sorry, could we just go back to that other slide? Number two. Thank you, Beatrice. Brilliant. 
Um, so of the 10 different boroughs that are involved, Lewisham is one. Um, and all of this is accessible to you locally through Lewisham. So before the COVID-19, we were running workshops here in the borough from Deptford all the way to Downham. So literally the, the coast to coast, if you like, of the Lewisham borough to make sure um, this is a service that is accessible and visible to everyone. I think um, someone just mentioned it briefly before about sometimes there are services in place, but it's about the visibility. It's about people being aware that they're there. Um, and so part of this project has been going out to um, the different corners of the boroughs, utilizing, <clears throat> excuse me, utilising the community libraries as well um, over in areas such as um, Forest Hill and Sydenham and, and Manor House and, and Grove Park um, to make sure that it's ready and available on a local level so people know that it's there and they can receive this free fully funded business support um, you know, it's all at the tip of their hands. They get access to up to £5 million worth of uh, market research. They get access to remote station working. So there's there's a lot of different resources that come. Next slide, please. Brilliant. So as I mentioned, as part of our, we'll cover things like accounts, bank accounts, um, things within Lewisham and beyond um, to engage with these changes, to engage with the world going more digital and present the skills that they do on a daily basis. I think one thing that's really fantastic um, to see naturally from the young people is they form meaningful relationships remotely. And this is something that businesses have struggled with for years, absolute decades. And now at a time where we're being shifted and businesses are being forced on Zoom, Maurice is being forced on Zoom, which is great because we're all here and loving it. Um, but one thing they find very difficult is, is, is forming meaningful business relationships using remote um, technologies. And I think um, Opportunities such as this is going to be potentially where young people are going to be able to step in, going to be able to make their voices heard um, and have a real impact, a tangible impact in how the world is shaped going forward, because ultimately it's a future for them. So it's a marketing masterclass um, that is part of the different workshops we offer. I offer one term support with the local SME champion. I am the Lewisham SME champion. Hello. Um, and a, a wealth of other resources, but I'm just aware of the time. So, much. We also have multiple dates for these workshops, and they're all available um, from your home remotely. So it's very easy. However, there's a bit of paperwork involved. Um, the European Regional Development Fund, um, they put up a big amount of money for people to reach this support. Um, the workshops alone, each one would be worth several hundred pounds, but it's all free, all fully funded. However, for return, they need to gather some information, which includes a registration form. Uh, we won't go for it now because I'm sure Morris is sick to death with me and my forms. Uh, but yeah, there's a short registration form um, to fill in and um, what I'll probably do if anyone is interested or feels like anyone would be interested that is in their networks I'll probably just pop a, pop a link to the form uh, in the chat um, as along with my email address so uh, anyone can contact me as you can see from the 10 different London boroughs involved in the program um, there's a champion for each of the borough um, and I feel very proud to say actually that um, among the champions um, I feel the BAME community are quite strongly represented um, and also um, they've gone for a middle ground with a young team so it's a very fresh energy fresh uh, look to business um, and also a point I'd like to make is actually 15% of the people that have completed our course so far have been under 25. So we are um, seeing just under a fifth of the total people engaging uh, with this project um, being young people under 25, um, which is brilliant. And we want to see it grow and grow and grow year on year. Uh, could we get the next slide, please? Brilliant. So in relation to COVID-19 response, um, 
because Maurice contacted me and, and said, you know, we, we want to specific, specifically look at um, fame, youth issues, um, but also in relation to COVID-19. Now, um, Lewisham in relation to COVID-19 for business, um, the mayor has released an open letter that is available. Um, this is a link. Um, we're not going to click onto the link now, um, but there's a wealth of resources available um, for specifically for businesses asking questions about business rates, what they're eligible for, links to um, government guidelines and so on. So there's a wealth of information available to all businesses um, if they are established um, such as coming up and Richard or if they're brand new um, and a fresh business idea um, and they still need some help along the way we are here to support engage um, click on to um, the Lewisham website uh, you can look for SIL and um, we will certainly support you as much as we can we'll get the next slide please so next that's it, brilliant. Um, so I just wanted to, again, touch on awareness um, because there's a lot of great things going on in Barra, um, in relation to business support. Um, and so I just wanted to make all the organisations onto this chat aware of what's going on, as well as the young people. So we have the London Borough Evolution Economic Development Team uh, that work very hard from uh, Lawrence House that we work closely with, uh, Joe Lee, Penn and the others. Um, so they have a wealth of lists um, and information that business will need specifically around COVID-19. Uh, we have the Lewisham Construction Hub, which focuses on the property. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are aware of um, kind of the policies and, and the promises that have been made in terms of uh, building properties um, in Lewisham and tackling the property crisis. So they are there to support that. Uh, Lewisham is also one of the London Mayor Creative Enterprise Zones and they've called it Shapes. So in Lewisham it's called Shapes and that is there to support creatives. There's a lot of young people that are in creative industries using tech um, and design. Um, so that's an amazing, amazing um, kind of a hub for that. There's also the long-standing cockpit arts um, that also works with creatives, um, but probably a lot more established. Uh, can we get the next slide, please? Next slide, please. That's it, brilliant. So as I mentioned before, um, these are free resources fully funded. Can we just go back one slide, please? Uh, and what that includes is remote access to something called Cobra. Uh, now, Cobra is not just kind of what they do uh, with COVID-19 up in the House of Parliament and number 10. Uh, Cobra is also a complete business reference advisor that is available remotely um, to everyone absolutely free if you have a Lewisham library card. So it's a great time to go grab yourself a Lewisham library card. But the main thing is this is like Google for business. Um, so it's an absolutely fantastic resource. If you're, for example, planning to set up, I don't know, um, a mechanic, you can just type that in. It will tell you all the health and safety things you need, all the qualifications you need, how much that might cost, where you can get them. Um, it kind of gives you a business opportunity profile, events to go to, um, associations to link in with. And again, everything we're doing absolutely free, absolutely fully funded by the European Union. Um, the next things I just want to touch on that I'm sure many of you are aware of is the Federation of Small Business and the Prince's Trust, which is available for 18 to 30 year olds. Next slide, please. So on the next slide, you're going to see my contact details. So um, anyone is welcome to contact me for a bit more information. If they require some clarification, if they want me to send them some PDFs so they can um, circulate the information from them. Anyone who wants you to enroll, um, feel free to take a picture of this um, and get in contact with me. Um, I suppose just to round up and to leave off, um, I want you to just mention something I read today in the Financial Times. And that is that one in six young people have lost their jobs so far um, due to COVID-19. And so, you know, when we're talking about these issues um, going forward, we know there's going to be a problem, neat circumstances, not in education, um, employment or training. But I suppose the hidden E 
is entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, out of this COVID-19, a lot of people are going to have to create their own opportunities. Um, and as a young person, if you are not in work or employment, or sorry, if you're not in employment or education or training, um, and you're sitting around thinking, what am I going to do during this time? What you don't want um, is a big CV gap. And if even during this time you, you look into setting up a business, you understand some business fundamentals, um, at least when employers look back or anyone comes to view your CV history, you don't have a big gap there. They can see you've tried something different. You might become very successful at it, but if not, you're certainly going to gain some very important skills along the way. Um, and I think skill development is just going to be critical going forward for everybody. Uh, I'm happy to round off there and welcome any questions, if that's OK, Maurice. That's fine. I'd just like to say, if we can um, lose that slide. Thank you. I've done Mark's course, and I think the course is also good for people. If you have got a business and you want to refresh, I think the course is fantastic, especially the marketing course. And so I would highly recommend it. It's just a great opportunity opportunity for young people who want to be an entrepreneur who want to set up their own business it's a free workshop free mm -hmm. you're also networking you're learning about marketing and that's why I invited Mark in uh, to do his presentation so if you know anybody who wants to do the course or you want to do a refresher you can do as well I'm going to take one question. I'm sorry, Mark. That's fine. I'm just going to have to take one question because of the time. Has anybody got a question for Mark? Oh, unfortunately, guys, as well, I've got two rooms. There's 46 people. I can only see one room. So if you're waving at me, <laughs> you might be in, the, in another room. If you can put in chat if you want a question. So I do apologize. And then I'll go to David and get Imran. Did you put your hand up then? You're, you're on mute. And I'm coming to you after David, please. Hey guys. Um, no, I just want to say, uh, Mark, it sounds brilliant. Um, the courses and stuff. If people can't make the dates, are new ones coming up? And will we, Morris, will you be distributing these presentations to everyone so we can see them afterwards? Yes, we recorded everything. We get... And we're documenting um, all the questions in Zoom, Facebook and we're going to feed them back. Yeah, if you want anything, just let me know. Oh, thanks. So Mark, with the dates, are they repeating or how does that work? Yeah, so to answer your question, uh, Imran, um, thank you for the question. It's several times per quarter, they will repeat each workshop. So for example, day one workshop, I believe it happens times a quarter. Same for the day two, same for the marketing masterclass. So if you can't make a specific date, um, there are further opportunities. Also, what we've noticed is shifting to online, going away from the um, traditional kind of in-person uh, workshops we're delivering. Um, it's difficult to get people to sit in front of a computer for a whole day to do a workshop from nine to 10, sorry, from uh, 10 to five, as you can imagine. So what That's we've done nice. is getting into half as well to make it a bit more digestible. So if someone wants to do the morning on one day and then the afternoon on a complete different day that's absolutely fine um it's, it's very flexible it's all about kind of working with the individual as well so um i just encourage anyone who's interested um to just get in touch and um we can send out as much information as possible and um yeah it's, it's very accessible it's very malleable to people's time it definitely looks like a great course um especially the marketing one as morris was saying it's something that so many people just seem to fall at the first hurdle at. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. No, you're welcome. Okay. Um, I'm, what, what I'm going to have to do here, guys, there's quite a few presentations, including mine. We're just not going to make the deadline. So I am going to use this as a networking opportunity. And I'm going to ask a few people who have asked me questions. And also they've got um, some resource um, information as well. So I'm going to use this as a marketing opportunity and I'm going to do another um, conference in two weeks time where we can basically take the next step else it's going to be impossible for us to get to anything. And, it, and, it, and it's, um, I, I owe my hands up responsible and you know how people like to talk. So um, I do apologize, but I'm, I'm coming to Motti, Colleen, Sabrina, I'm coming to you and Lillian. But first, I want to introduce you to a man. 
who has been decorated over the last 12 months with an MBE. I'm so happy to have him in the room, and I'd like to introduce him to the room to give us a few words of inspiration. David, David Michael, sir, are you ready, Mr. MBE? You're on mute. <laughs> You're on mute still. All right, can you hear me now? I certainly can, David. Welcome, All sir. Right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Maurice. And thank you for yourself and Ron for getting tonight together and Richard for sponsoring and all the wonderful presentations we've had so far. It's, it is indeed very inspiring. I'd just like to make a few um, observations and suggestions for everyone's consideration. First of all, with regard to the health, what's available health-wise in the borough, um, I mean, I can send uh, more um, better references later to circulate, but there is an initiative in the borough with several community groups, organizations, the council, Lewisham and Greenwich NHS Trust for um, like being a resource for people that really need uh, help and assistance during this um, COVID um, virus uh, emergency. Also, in terms of any other, yeah, I don't know if Daniel's still around, Daniel Pink, but Family House ISIS for many years has been a resource for um, uh, African, African Caribbean people with mental health concerns in the borough. Daniel may be able to confirm that. And there is also the South London Counselling Services in the Lee Green uh, shopping complex. And uh, uh, also Citizens Advice Bureau should be able to signpost uh, people to uh, more concrete uh, support um, that's available in the borough. Um, would just like to, um, one of my, uh, things I like to advocate is to wire up so all the people in the rooms in the rooms tonight and who are participating and who've spoken and who may not get a chance to speak tonight I would certainly encourage us to kind of do a skills audit of everyone and also have a directory of all the people involved tonight and a directory of support groups and networks we know in the borough so that if anybody asks we can say uh, uh, this is uh, this person's profile this is their organization's profile and this is what we can all tap into um, um, also in terms of issues and concerns um, uh, we can we, we, many of us know what the issues and concerns are before this pandemic emergency, uh, and we know that many will be exacerbated. We already know in terms of uh, police activity uh, and uh, fines dished out uh, during this pandemic that the impact on black people and and people of heritage from the Indian subcontinent is in excess of their representation in the community. And um, I think the, a number of the speakers have mentioned it. Yes, we should look at what we can do as African, African Caribbean, African American people, um, but we should also make sure we don't let uh, we should look at what representation is in terms of our members of parliament or local council, because a lot of the, of the government's response has been challenged to the local authorities in, in terms of people uh, not being able to work or losing their jobs or businesses. A lot of that activity has been cha channeled through the council and our executive mayor. And so people, we should be able to look at how we can tap into those resources. One of the things I can certainly offer to 
individuals and organizations in this network is uh, not only my background as a, a former police officer in Lewisham and London, but also I was a local councillor in Lewisham for a term. And uh, I think there's whether people are intrinsically interested in politics or not, a lot of our lives, uh, those of us who pay our council tax, parents have paid it for years and grandparents, and we have a stake in how uh, finances and representations by our members of parliament and our uh, council, our executive mayor, our ward councillors, and in terms of any issues or concerns, we should be able to access and we should access and not let those uh, provisions, we shouldn't let them off the hook when we are investing and we have invested sig sig significantly. And as I say, with this present emergency, a lot of the gov government's responses is, is to channel, channel facilities through the local council. And um, yeah, I'd just like to say we should um, kind of listen out. I, I think all of us have, which is what I really wanted to do tonight, all of us have um, experiences, we have knowledge, we have our own organisations, but I think it's really always good sometimes to listen to what other people have to offer within our network, within the African, African Caribbean communities in Lewisham, and then and then see how we can wire up wire up um, um, the needs and where support is required from from what we learn from the other other people and other organizations who are around so i know there's many more people to speak and um, we're short of time so thank you very much no, thank you, David, for attending and giving us your um, information. Has anybody got any questions for, for David at all? Okay, I'm just looking in the other room very quickly before I move on. No, I can't see nobody waving. Guys, it's pretty obvious now with the time, I'm not going to make the deadline, which is disappointing because... There's been no action plans and there's been no workshops. And I think in the next meeting that we have, we're going to have breakout rooms and discuss plans of action. I've got two very good proposals that are, uh, that, that, that are collectively can help youth short, medium and long term. I'm going to do a lot of, I'm going to do a few to save time. I'm going to do a few one minute presentations so people can present their organization if you've got something to offer now that's relevant for youth or parents. And I'm going to go to uh, Colleen Fenton who's got training courses. Colleen, are you there? Hi, Morris, can you hear me? I certainly can. Can't see me, but you can hear me. Hi, I'm Carleen Fenton. Um, some of you know me already. Uh, I run a local training. Um, I'm a local training provider, and we've got government funding to run short courses. So we run a number of short courses. Um, they're all accredited NCFE level two, and a lot of our courses are the ones that um, underpin a business. So we have. Um, this is admin customer service, data protection, data security, business startups, but also um, these are these are fully subsidised, um, usually for adults. And um, however, um, we are looking at running, allowing young people, two young people per course, to attend for free. We don't get funding. We won't get funding for these um, young people, but it's actually putting something back into our community because we've trained a lot of Lewisham residents and we work closely with Lewisham Homes. So what I will do, I will forward um, Morris the links to our courses. I think I can do that, Morris. And yeah. um, anyone, you can have a look at all the free courses and, um, you know, if you could just pass it on to parents or, you know, 
anyone who may be interested in them, in them basically. We work closely with um, the DWP at Forest Hill as well. Um, and they've been referring people to us as, and also the Bromley. Uh, 60 seconds, Mrs. Fenton, please. All right. It's Carleen Fenton at DCS Training. UK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma darling. Um, if you've got any questions for anybody in the room, guys, you can get in touch with me. And if you've got any programs you want me to distribute, as I said before, this is the first meeting of youth being COVID-19. The next one is in two weeks' time. Um, I haven't really achieved what I wanted to achieve tonight in the way of more progression, but hopefully I can learn from this and we can do a bit more progress, progressive work in a couple of weeks' time. I'm going to Motti. Daniel, I'm coming to you. Guys, can you give me 60 seconds? And, and Ros, I'm coming to you after Daniel. Motti, are you there? Yep, yep, I'm here. Hit Thank me you. with it, Motti, hit me with it. Okay, so we are a youth mentoring organisation. <laughs> and like so many of you, you run um, youth mentoring um, uh, projects across, and it'd be interesting to, to catch up and do something collectively. But um, we're also starting a befriending, which is a shorter term, just to, to catch up on young people to see how they're doing and those who are vulnerable as well. So you can um, contact us on our cliff details there, info at joinedupthinkinguk.com okay. or check out our website, www.joinedupthinkinguk.com. Okay, don't forget we're putting all this information together and we'll email all the details as well. Lillian, I'm going to bring Lillian in after Daniel. Lillian is our funding queen. She is. She just come out of a hospital. She's fighting fit. But if you want to know about funding applications Lillian's just set up her own business she's going to come on you've got 60 seconds after Daniel Lillian please uh, hi so Daniel 60 seconds please is <laughs> There's an echo. Daniel, have you frozen? Lillian, would you oh, want to go um, next? And Daniel can come in the back. Oh. Daniel, are you with us? No, I'm sorry, Daniel. Daniel, you can go after Lillian. Lillian, would you like to take the floor? Hi, yeah, just to say good evening, everybody. Uh, Thank you, Morris. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes, hi. I can. Daniel, hi, everyone. Um, oh. Daniel keeps coming in and out, Lillian. Sorry, go oh. ahead. Okay, oh. me? Sh sh oh, hi, I'm Lillian Brown. Um, good evening, everyone. So I'm Lillian Brown from Lillian Brown, uh, Lillian at Lillian Brown Consulting.co.uk. My main focus is to kind of resource and support the BAME sector with funding information, funding support, and practical um, information. I have a mailing list of a range of different funders relevant to COVID-19, whether it be being young people, older people, there's a whole range of resources that people can um, access. You can just email me if you want to be added to that mailing list, and then I can offer you the kind of support that I've been offering um, the community sector for the nurse. How's that voluntary reaction nurse? So Lillian at Lillian Brown Consulting, I'll put it in the chat. So you just get in touch anytime. I'm also part of the BME Network fund, funding subgroup that Barbara shares as well. Thanks. Guys, if you want to know anything about funding and resources, Lillian and I, how long did you work for Val for, Lillian? Nine years. You worked for Val for nine years. She is the funding queen. And if you want information, please go and see her. Daniel, 60 seconds, please, sir. Daniel. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Am I uh, yeah, my name is Daniel Pink. I've lived and grown up in the borough, set up an organization in the borough to work with African and African Caribbean children around leadership, learning and community. Um, my biggest um, concern is what's happening to African Caribbean children and adults within the London Borough of Lewisham. Also been part of 
um, Family Health ISIS Mental Services that was here for 30 years, um, working with the community in terms of mental health and well-being, still have links with them. And so we do work with young people um, from 11 to 16 and still doing that now. And we're doing online things with young people. So if you've got young people that need to be worked with, um, we're here to work with them in any shape or form. Brilliant. Thanks, Daniel. If you put your details, send me your details as well, Daniel, and then I'll distribute okay. it to the network. Okay. Um, okay. Is, Thank you. Is Richard, Richard, you asked me a question earlier. You work with um, Sabrina. Are you on, Are you still here? Oh, yes, I'm still here. Sorry, I didn't intend to um, have a quick, I didn't intend to speak. But um, yes, I work with Sabrina on Surge. Um, we're just a new organization, really. We haven't yet got any sort of structural funding, but our focus really is too, too strong. It's first involvement and engagement. So I'm a teacher for 20 years and I'm really interested in empowering parents. You know, we have so many of our kids being excluded temporarily and permanently, ended up in proves, ending up with all sorts of issues. And I think that um, as an education professional, I realize the power that we have um, to, to force issues. And I think that I'm really, we want to really um, empower and kind of equalize really. So we're all about, um, helping parents um, communicate, give them the information that they need, um, signposting them to resources, doing all that sort of thing. And as well as uh, the second prong of our business will be about uh, sort of clinical and medical issues, mental health issues, again, signposting and directing. So we're really interested. I'm really interested in talking to Lillian about funding. We are grassroots, you know, we've just started, so it's green shoots for us really, but we think that there is a big bit of work to be done and I was really interested in listening to Joel earlier, um, you know, as a teacher for 20 years and I've lived in, I, I don't live in, in, in Lewisham anymore, but I have lived in Lewisham for a long, for a long time. I really am interested in how we and me as a teacher can what we can do in, in supporting, you know, the things that he was talking about. So really interested in sort of joining some networks here. Uh, okay. so thanks very much for the opportunity. To chat. Well, well, Richard, we will be doing a part two, as I mentioned, um, in a couple of weeks time and send me your details. I know Sabrina quite well. So um, good luck with your venture and please link up with Lillian. Um, and can I, is, is it Roz? Um, is Roz still- Sorry, Maurice, can I say something? Can I, can I for a second, Danielle? Please, Roz, are you in the house? Yeah, I am. I'm still here. Okay, I can't score on love. You wanted 60 seconds. Yeah, my name is Rosamund Adukisi Debra. I am the WHO advocate for air quality and health. And I also run the Ella Roberta Family Foundation after my late daughter, who died from a severe asthma attack. I would like to offer my services here as the head of year, ex head of year, and ex head of sixth form especially regarding the grading that is going to be, i.e. GCSEs and A-levels. I believe that, listening to the conversations tonight, that young people may need a structure on how to move forward, especially if they don't get the grades which they need. And I'm also willing to offer my services and my skills as a counsellor. Um, I've said this numerous times about the impacts on mental health of COVID-19. And I'll try and report back to this forum. Um, the National Health Service, they are doing an investigation about BAME and COVID-19. And I'm waiting for the report to come out. And I'm quite happy to analyse the report and then report back. So that would be my contribution. Um, thank you, everyone. Rosmond, thank you for... I hope you remember me, Rosmond. Of course I do. Of course I remember you. Oh, well, so get I in will. touch with me. Send us the information. Please come back to the I next will. meeting, and, and and hopefully we'll get you involved and connected with people. Is Jacob here from from um, the mayor, young mayor's team? Jacob. Jacob from the young mayor. Young Jacob. Mayor. <clears throat> Sorry, Maurice. Jacob had to leave probably about ten minutes ago. 15 minutes ago, so he, so he just headed off, but he oh, did say bye. Right, okay. Guys, I'm going to open the floor for two more 60 seconds. Nigel, how Nigel. are you? 
Nigel? Yeah. Hi, Nigel. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I, I'm fine, thank you. Nigel's a mentor and he does a lot of work with the Stephen Lawrence Trust and a lot of quality training. I just wanted your thoughts on tonight's meeting, Nigel, and perhaps a bit of in inspiration, how we can take this meeting forward. Uh, inspiration, well, I think the first thing to say is absolutely amazing. You've got 40 or 50 people on the Zoom, plus the Facebook, plus the, uh, you know, that's that's a pretty good turnout, Morris. So I think you need, need to give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, really inspiring uh, what a lot of people are saying. Just very briefly, what I've been doing with, with Ron at the Stephen Lawrence Trust and working with a number of you that, uh, that know me, uh, around coaching, mostly around uh, coaching, facilitating, group coaching, um, and uh, what I would call kind of bite-size uh, learning using my background, which is mostly in corporate sector, last 10 years in the charity sector. So I understand governance, I understand a lot about strategy and, uh, and so on. Um, and been working with Morris and a few other people. Um, you know, I think if you want to get in, in touch with me, um, do it through Morris, do it through Ron. Um, you know, love to meet a few more of you. That's all, Morris. Thing that's enough, isn't it? Thank you, guys. Um, DB, hi. Yes, sir. How are you doing, hi, Morris? Hi. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but I know you've been oh. waving at me before. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Sixty seconds. Yeah, sure. Um, um, I wasn't waving, but um, good timing anyway. All right. <laughs> um, I, I, my name's Donald Bailey. So, um, like a few people, I've, I've grown up in the borough. Um, work for Lucian for the last 10 years, uh, dealing with grants and um, uh, local community projects and sort of facilitating payments and uh, funding stuff. And recently I've just become the chair of the Lucian Bamestar Forum, um, working with a couple of guys on here as well, Mark, uh, who you'll see, um, and a couple of others. Um, and yeah, we, we are we are in the big stages, and we're looking to kind of connect with all sort sort of organisations in the borough, um, BAME forums, and also um, other organisations where we can sort of signpost people to really good services that they can access. Um, and the and the other thing that we're actually looking at is is our communication channels and our communication tool. So um, one of the things I did want to say, to, um, maybe up to Jonas earlier was uh, how do we kind of adapt our communication channels to kind of get the message to the people that really really sort of need to hear it um, but but yeah other than that really really well done this is this is brilliant um, and yep happy to kind of network and, and build our, our wire up our network as, as David mentioned brilliant and thank you for attending everybody um, I, I'm going to put this out again in a couple of weeks' time. I'm going to talk to Nigel and Ron and the Young's Mayor team, how we can take it to the next step. We're going to have a lot of information coming in. We'll, we'll report that out to you guys as well. Um, I believe Danielle and Jonas wanted 60 seconds, and then I'm going to have to wrap it up there, guys. So, and, and, and Ron, sorry, I know Ron wants to say a few words. So, Danielle, did you want to say something? Hi. Um, yeah, I quickly wanted to say something on the high exclusion rates that I think that's, um, that stems from uh, the detentions as well and the way um, the schools choose to um, respond to um, bad behaviour in school. So they take a, an approach that the most, most Western countries, the criminal system, like the... Okay, most systems in the world, the, the approach that they take, which is to punish, which is mainly to punish people, not to reform people. So I think that um, we as people in Lewisham should try and push the initiative to do what more of what um, Joel is doing, which is looking at the STEM, like the problem, trying to solve that problem and then helping the young people reform before that gets, that becomes a deeper problem and leads to them going to jail. So we should try and um, get detentions to be changed for other like reformative things that would help actually help them and not just um, lead them to um, um, becoming the labels that have been given to them due to the things that they've done. Because most of the time they normally stem from like family problems or problems in their community or whatnot. So that's just what I wanted to say. And what I'd like you to do, Daniel, is the thoughts and the questions that you've asked tonight, 
Um, there's people in the room who could answer your question and make suggestions and going forward we can make plans. So keep the thoughts. I'm going to communicate with everybody and try and work on some solution with you and with the group. And and the last speaker for tonight, De um, Jonas, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So firstly, thank you for the event, Maurice. You've done an amazing job. You've run everybody involved on an amazing job. And guys, before I say what I need to say, I want to say that we should definitely take on, on board what Daniel said because that's powerful right there. And I agree 100% with her about the detentions and how it turns students into, you know, the whole labels and stuff like that. And I just want to say before I go, I do, I facilitate workshops and I also do public speaking. So if you need a speaker or facilitator, I'm always open. My LinkedIn is Jonas Andrew hyphen Philip. And my Instagram is Jonas Andrew, it's just Jonas Andrew Philip. So if you want to connect with me and we can have a conversation on maybe speaking of facilitating workshops for parents, young people, just normal adults, I'm always open to the opportunities. Thank you all for coming out today. Thank you, Ron. Ron Bourne, are you there, sir? You making a cup of tea? Do you have to <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm here, man. That's just on. <laughs> yeah, uh, just just quickly. Um, so I dropped something in the chat um, a few minutes ago, but I, I thought about it again. I was just trying to get a takeaway from tonight. Yes, please. And I thought, and I thought that um, what I'd suggested was uh, a way to capture the somebody. Somebody said skills on it. I'm not really sure, but I just wanted to start that process. Um, I said uh, we could drop our information at Google Sheet, but I'm like, why are we replicating something? Whoever has a has a LinkedIn address, we could start a LinkedIn group for this particular um, endeavor. And anybody who doesn't have LinkedIn can jump on LinkedIn and we can um, participate that way. We can just keep it going, keep the conversation going. Any information you want to drop in the group with that way, but that's another way we can do a, a quick skills audit because everybody's skills information should be there. Yes. And one of my, my presentation nights was about this group working together on projects going forward. So if I'm working with Daniel or I'm working with Joel, we're all promoting each other's business. And I've got a couple of, um, a, a couple of projects that includes everybody, which I'll present on the next meeting. And, and what I'd also like to do is that if I can get your feedback on tonight, we're going to send you a form to um, let us know what your thoughts are, where we can improve this, any particular subjects. I'm disappointed that we haven't progressed, but people have, hopefully people have enjoyed the presentation. So from me and the team, Ron, um, Young Mayor's team, Thank you for coming. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got something from it. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time with part two. If I can get a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Thanks, um, guys. That's good enough for me. <laughs> and I'll see you all in a couple of weeks, guys. And thank you so much thank again. Thank you, Morris. No thank problem. You. Anytime, guys. Thank I'll see you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye